We think your child has got a condition called congenital myasthenia. This is a hundred times less common than myasthenia gravis and until recently was thought to be a single disorder but now we know that there are a number of different causes. Your child is weak we believe because there is a problem in the process of transmitting the nerve impulse from the tip of the nerve to the muscle. You make a decision in your brain that you want to move and you send an electrical impulse down the nerve to the muscle. You, you need to know that a number of proteins are involved in the process of transmitting the impulse from the tip of the nerve to the muscle. Some of the proteins are here in the tip of the nerve, some are in the gap between the nerve and the muscle, and some are in the muscle itself. Now we know that each protein um, is coded for by a single gene. In other words, a single gene is responsible for each protein. And it turns out that in congenital myasthenia, mutations can be present in one of these proteins or in the gene responsible for the protein. And it's that that causes the weakness. So we believe that there is a faulty gene in your child and that this is responsible for the weakness. We can find out which gene is faulty in most children by genetic analysis of a blood sample. This analysis is a complex process and it can take many weeks, indeed sometimes months. Moreover, we can't absolutely guarantee to get a positive result because we don't yet know all the genes that are involved in nerve muscle transmission. Your child has this mutation because he inherited a faulty gene from you and a faulty gene from your husband. To understand why you and your husband are well and your child is weak, you need to know that genes come in pairs. And both you and your husband have one good gene that compensates for the faulty gene. But unfortunately, when your child was created, he got both faulty genes and that's why he has congenital myasthenia. You can be thought of as carriers of the disorder because you have one faulty gene, but you're not affected because you have a good, one good gene that keeps you well. If genetic analysis shows that your son has the commonest form of congenital myasthenia, he should respond well to pyridostigmine and similar drugs. And as the years go by, he may indeed become a little stronger, particularly as he reaches adolescence. However, because the genetic abnormality was built into him when he was created, he will always remain uh, at risk from slight weakness due to congenital myasthenia. However, many of our patients taking medication live normal lives, and importantly, they can marry and have children provided that they don't marry into your family where faulty genes affecting congenital myasthenia are present, as we discussed earlier. The Department of Health has set up NSCAG, which supports nationwide services for rare diseases. For congenital myasthenia, it funds a specialist service at Oxford, which is free to patients living in England and Scotland. The service includes clinical assessment, specialist investigations, and analysis of DNA from blood or mouthwash samples. To access part or all of this service, your doctor would need to complete a pre-referral form. DNA analysis is a complex process because there are many proteins at the nerve muscle junction and any one of them could be affected in congenital myasthenia. We can screen for all the proteins commonly involved in congenital myasthenia, but it is a long process. We use the information provided on the pre-referral form to help decide which protein to screen first. Age of onset is helpful as although, strictly speaking, congenital means present from birth, 
Some syndromes may not cause problems until the teens or as an adult. Some syndromes show a distinct pattern of weakness. For example, the eyes may be particularly affected, causing ptosis or droopy eyelids and difficulty moving the eyes. Swallowing may also be affected, causing difficulty eating and drinking. Respiratory muscle weakness can result in breathlessness, especially when lying flat. We can assess the strength of the breathing muscles by measuring the vital capacity. In some patients there may be little or no limb weakness, whereas others may have difficulty walking or climbing stairs. Knowing the pattern of inheritance also helps us decide which protein to screen first. Although the majority of congenital myasthenic syndromes are inherited recessively, where both genes need to be affected in order to have symptoms. The slow channel congenital myasthenic syndrome is inherited dominantly. Here, only one copy of the affected gene is enough to cause symptoms. Because of this, there may be affected members through many generations of a family. All these clinical clues help us to determine which gene is faulty. This is important when deciding on treatment. In syndromes where not enough signal gets from the nerve to the muscle, we can boost the signal with drugs such as pyridostigmine and 3,4-DAP. In the slow channel congenital myasthenic syndrome, too much signal gets through, damaging the muscle. We can treat this with drugs that block the signal, such as quinidine and fluoxetine. Your doctor can obtain an NSCAG form by sending an email to the address shown on the screen. You may be interested to know that most of the discoveries of the genes involved in congenital myasthenia have been made over the last 10 years or so. Um, many of them in the United States at the Mayo Clinic and many also by Professor David Beeson in our group in Oxford. But we do not yet know all the genes that can be involved and there are some children with congenital myasthenia in whom we can't yet make a diagnosis because we don't know the gene that's faulty. But the research that is continuing into this disorder should one day allow us to identify all the genes that can be affected in congenital myasthenia and thus to make a diagnosis in children who at present have a disorder of unknown genetic origin. Thank you very much, John. I hope you found that useful and now know where you can find out more. And don't forget that the MGA is dedicated to supporting care, education and research around the myasthenias. We've tried to make the CD-ROM as user-friendly as possible. If you want to get back to the front page to view something else, just click on the Home button.